as the teams make their way onto the pitch for this evening's game. The Daggers will be playing in their traditional red and blue halves with blue shorts and red socks. And the visitors, Aldershot Town, will be playing in a sky blue top with black socks and black shorts. I will give you the visitors starting in goal with Lewis Ward and they'll cross the back four from right to left. It's Shea Alexander, Will Evans, George Fowler and Lewis Kinsella. Forming the midfield partnership, it's Mane Oyakeli and Adam McDowell. And across the three supporting the striker on the right is James Rowe, centrally J Jim Kellerman and on the left Josh McQuid and up front the target man Scott Rendell. And on the bench for the visitors, it's Jake Cole, Matt McClure, Nicky Kabamba, Jake Gallagher and Fabian Robert. For the Daggers this afternoon, we believe they will also be lining up in a 4-2-3-1 formation with Mark Cousins in goal. And across the back four from right to left, it's Ben Nunn, Craig Robson, Luke Pennell and Jake Howes. And in midfield, centrally, we have Andre Bucco and Matt Robinson. And from right to left, Dan Sparks, Luke Howe and Fajiri Okunbiri supporting Michael Cheek in attack. And on the bench for the Daggers this afternoon, we have Lewis Moore, Kande Cheek, Bonzangala, Mason Bloomfield and Corey Whiteley. The referee gets us underway, Mr. Neil here. We are off as Aldershot launch a deep diagonal ball into that left-hand channel and Dagenham claw the ball away with Andre Bucco looking to punch it forward and it's a ch good challenge from Michael Cheek but has the referee judged that to be a foul? Oh, I believe it is a Wilder shot throw in and play backwards. As the number five, Will Evans, pumps the ball deep left and that's a good climb from the left winger there and a chance! Oh and it's a wonderful strike and Wilder shot have taken an early lead. It was a brilliantly taken strike. It was launched deep into the far channel and it was knocked down superbly by the left winger. And I believe on the edge of the area, it was Jim Kellerman who struck the ball in, but I'll need confirmation on that. A really crisp left-footed strike, a daisy cutter on the edge of the area. And with just five minutes played, the visitors all the shot town take a lead. And it was something out of nothing. It was a very direct piece of play onto that left wing. A well-headed ball down by the left winger. Josh McQuid, I believe it was, and it was a superbly taken strike on the edge of the area, leaving Mark Cousins with very little chance as the ball was fired into the bottom left-hand corner. Howells and Bucco, and now to Danny Sparks on this left wing, who finds Howells well, who can cross into the area, and it's into the back of the net, but it's been ruled out for offside by the referee, Mr. Neil Gare. It was actually a wonderful delivery from Howells, who did well to link up with his left winger, Sparks, who... Gave him the one-two and the delivery into the area was wonderfully cushioned into the top right corner. But to the dismay of the Dagenham fans, it was indeed chalked off for offside. The preferred route here is that the ball is thrown forward in the hope of finding Michael Cheek. But it wasn't dealt with and now Sparks, he's done well to do. And they crossed the ball across and, oh, and it was Michael Cheek who tried to slide and get a shot towards goal. But it was cleared away by Oya Kelly. Positive signs from Dagenham in this last five minutes or so. Dan Sparks finally getting past Jay Alexander on the right and able to whip a ball into the area which Michael Cheek was only a matter of inches away from getting a sliding touch onto which could have made the first save of the afternoon for Lewis Ward which will probably be a slight cause for concern as Aldershot win the ball back here on the centre circle and Scott Rendell spreads it wide left to the number 15 who's going to cut inside and maybe fancy a strike from there and it was a good long range effort by Josh McQuid as Oya Kelly has the ball on the centre circle and he tries to one-two it with Kinsella but it was well done by Okambiri who can use his pace now after a nice one-two space for Okambiri to run and attack and strike a powerful effort from Okambiri who had time and space and used his pace and dribbling skills to good effect there but the shot was too powerful to really test Lewis Ward in the older shot goal but it was again another dangerous foray forward from the Daggers and encouraging signs for the home side as they look to get back in this match and draw level before the break. D of the box. And it will indeed oh, be Sparks who steps up to strike it. But his free kick sails about two or three yards over. It had good shape to it. The number 14 playing on the left wing today for Dagenham. 
He has a dangerous left foot at Neil Hare this afternoon. He's keeping a tight lid on proceedings as Cheek heads the ball inside to Okambiri who retains possession. It's back with Howells, the left back, who will try and play the ball into the feet of Sparks. And now Howell, the namesake. Oh, it was a nice bit of link-up play and Sparks is into the box here. Chance to shoot. Oh, is it? There was appeals for handball as the ball was fired across the area. It was a dangerous moment which almost looked as if it was going to trick, end up trickling into the net. Another moment where Dan Sparks managed to get the opposite side of Jay Alexander. And it was a real opportunity for Dagnum. A low ball drilled across by the left winger. And it was almost turned into his net by a defender, I believe. Especially Michael Cheek up front. As McQuid tries a ball down this left wing for Aldershot. Headed away by Robson. And there was a bit of a barge in the back there, but the referee's happy to play on. And Okambiri controls it on this right flank and turns inside. Does he have an option in midfield? He's going to look to retain possession. Will there be another chance in this half with Dag for Dagnum? As Pennell spreads it left to, to Sparks. And the attempt to pass it back to the left back was fell in vain. And now they have it just behind the halfway line with Robson, who's going to try a more direct approach. But it was well read by Fowler. And now a ball forward. And it, oh, it's a speculative shot from the best part of 45 yards. And the referee's seen enough of that half. It is. The halftime whistle has just indeed gone. And it is 1-0 to the visitors. Here the referee is just looking for confirmation from his goalkeepers. As Mr. Neil here purses the whistle to his lips. And we are underway for this second 45 minutes of Vanarama National League football. Continue to push forward here in this Seems as if they're going to try and keep up this relentless pressure. I'm not sure if it's something they can do for 90 minutes, but it was a poor ball from Aldershot. And Okambiri won the ball back in midfield, but the referee's not a judge that to have been a foul. It looked as if initially as it might have been as McQuid comes forward now. And McDowell has the ball. Lots of time to cross on this left wing, and it's turned across and turned in by Scott Randell. And just like they did in that first half, the shots have fired again in the second. And the away fans are going crazy over there. 2-0 to the visitors. Lots of time and space on that left wing to cross a ball into the area and it was a good delivery and it was slid in at the back post by the shot skipper. And it is 2-0 to the visitors here. And it looks a real mountain to climb for the Daggers now. It was a really fast and clinical counter-attack from the shots there and it's really struck the home team like a rabbit in the headlights. It was somewhat against the run of play but the left winger found himself in far too much space and he had a lot of time to measure across it. and he found the skipper who turned it in at the back post. Corey Whiteley available to him. He also has the striker Mason Bloomfield to call upon as the ball is on that far left hand side and Pennell tried to, to carry the ball forward but he lost the ball and a good outside of the boot ball across the area whipped into the area by the left back Ken Seller he, it was a deep cross diagonally whipped across the area and it was almost finding Scott Rendell and three would have surely sealed the deal for the shot but it was somehow rebounded all the way back to an older shot player and they just seems to be very casual in their possession of the ball right now but the centre back Matt Evans moves forward and tries a deep ball and it's found Kinsella free on the left side is it headed in oh no it was an angled header from and a chance on the edge of the area goodness me it was a deep ball that found McQuid free on that left hand side and he tried a first time looping cross which almost found Scott Randell who tried then to arch his header into the top corner and it was cleared off the line by Craig Robson. Almost a third goal for the visitors and almost dead and buried there but it's going to be the first substitute of the off men of Dagenham here and Robson looks to play inside into the feet of Robinson and now Whiteley has a chance to turn but he didn't realise there was men on him and the sliding challenge couldn't find the feet but it's back with Jake Howells just behind the halfway line. It's a good ball into the feet of Mokambiri. Chance for a goal here. Oh! And it was cleared off the line by George Fowler. It was the best chance of the game. A hopeful ball from Jake Howells 
into Okambiri and somehow found it the feet. And a right footer standing over it, but it's a left footer delivery into the area. Well headed clear by Robinson. And now there's a chance to flick it inside for Whiteley, but they've lost the ball again, Dagenham. And who will retain the ball after this? This is a first time ball, hopeful of finding Mason Bloomfield, who steps on the gas in the hope of winning the ball there. And a battle for possession sees Howe lose out. And a bit of a ch vicious challenge there, but the referees wave play on. And Aldershot have the ball here as Rowe tries to turn. He looked to be fouled by Bacot, but the referees wave play on. And now Howes has the ball for, for Dagenham on the far left-hand side. He's got to try and take on the right back. He plays it into the feet of Okambiri. Chance on the edge of the area. Chance to shoot. Fantastic drill there for but Skimming across the surface and almost into the bottom corner. I wasn't quite sure how close that was to going in, but it was a fizz effort, a daisy cutter for Fajiri Okambiri, almost bringing the daggers back into the game. It was a good chance. And he would have hoped that that one would have at least been on target. I, I imagine we'll see three or four minutes of added time as Corey, as uh, Mason Bloomfield tries to flick on the ball there. And it's again going to go into the channel and Robson's got to watch out for these men on his back here as he plays it back to his goalkeeper, Mark Cousins, who sends a high ball forward and it's going to be a battle for possession between McCoy and Robinson. And now a chance for Bloomfield to turn and play a ball forward. And that's a decent ball. Is Whiteley going to be able to keep that in? He's done exactly that. The ball across the area is once again cut out by Evans, who's been the number five, has really been a real blocker in there for Dagnum. As Howe comes forward now, chance into the area, feeds it to the feet of Bloomfield, who cuts it back for Okambiri, who tries a left footed curler, but it is high, wide, and handsome. And Lewis Ward will be relieved to see that sail wide of his goal. Pretty easy afternoon here. And they haven't really tested him too much. The strikers that were introduced into this game, Kanji Cheek and Mason Bloomfield, neither of them started the game. But neither of them were able to provide anything which was any real telling contributions. As the ball is bobbling around central midfield, Coy does well to keep it with Shea Alexander, who tries a hopeful ball down that right flank, but it's back with Pennell, who's passed forward is more hopeful than anything else. And there is the full-time whistle. Mr. Neil Hare brings this evening's Vanarama National League clash to an end.